So uh, I want to just kind of start off with uh, who is Walmart, right? Um, so Walmart was actually founded by a guy named Sam Walton. He was a, a family man. Uh, he had an idea about how to change the retail business. Uh, and uh, especially he was, uh, he liked to emphasize how important it was to treat everyone equally while expecting the best from them. Uh, and you know, by most measures, you could say that he's uh, succeeded in the model that he's built. Um, today, there's over 11,000 stores, uh, 65 banners, 28 countries. We have 100 distribution centers worldwide and over 2 million employees, the largest private employer in the world. Um, and what we've started to do, so we started to actually use um, uh, OpenStack in the e-commerce side, but we're also bringing it now into the retail technology side. Um, and this is tied into how every location that we do is part of the larger community. Um, we, have, uh, we motivate our people to do the best for your peers, work with the best people, uh, and we want to provide the best infrastructure and platform to support those people. Um, uh, while many of it might sound out old fashioned, like our emphasis on people is where uh, we really think is a, a game changer. And you know, uh, as I've spent time walking into distribution centers and stores, like it's really kind of impressive how much uh, uh, every location is run like a family. So just uh, for those that are new to, to OpenStack in the audience, right? Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what OpenStack is and then how it relates to what we do at, at Walmart. Um, so it's software-defined infrastructure. It was started by, in 2010 by NASA and Rackspace. and currently has over 6,200 contributors from 360 frenemy companies collaborating on uh, common infrastructure goals and many tens of thousands of members. Uh, and I, for me, that is one of the amazing things is how we can all come together as a community and work towards those common goals and uh, achieve uh, uh, this vision of software-defined infrastructure. Um, and so when we look at uh, who is OpenStack, we, we see that we have thousands of monthly uh, contributions. Uh, uh, as recently, you know, we were peaking over 2,000 commits. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, it's just growing, as you can see, up and up and uh, into a healthy community and ecosystem. And when you really think about that, like getting a consistent con contribution over time is difficult, right? And that's what OpenStack has been able to prove and do, uh, is get that consistent contribution and, and develop a workable, stable, production-ready platform uh, that we now rely on at, at Walmart. Um, not only has it focused on its core goals, right, uh, but it is also um, expanded to support multiple projects. And uh, as you can see, the, the number of projects have grown uh, under the OpenStack umbrella uh, in the past few years and uh, created this uh, larger ecosystem that now brings value so that we can really use OpenStack to drive uh, the cloud platform uh, at Walmart. With that, I'm going to hand it off to Kiri to talk a little bit about how we transformed Walmart. Yeah, so <clears throat> I think it's important um, Walmart's been um, presenting at these uh, OpenStack conferences for a couple of years now. Um, but it's really important to talk about contextually where OpenStack fits in that overall transformation. Um, it's a um, technology stack transformation to start with, where OpenStack delivers the uh, infrastructure stack changes at the lower tiers. Um, but it, it, at Walmart, it's a much bigger transformation. Um, the stack is changing all the way up through the platform, through the applications. Uh, but it's not even just the technology, just the, just the stack change. The technology change is, is, is bigger than that. It involves organizational process changes, switching to agile methodologies, DevOps, and all of these uh, buzzwords that they are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. And obviously, that contextually fits with an overall uh, bigger change in uh, Walmart is in the retail industry, the industry is changing, and the whole economy is changing. So there's context and context layered upon OpenStack. So it's important to account for those when we talk about OpenStack. So traditionally, we've been talking about OpenStack, the growth of our OpenStack. We're up to 170,000 cores with many different data centers and facilities and, and cloud regions. Well, what, what we want to talk about is sort of like the level up here, which is essentially how we use OpenStack. Um, the consumption is important uh, to, to help the business to extract, to unlock the value of our programmatic infrastructure. And we have a technology called OneOps, which is, has been deployed for the last three years at Walmart together with OpenStack. They, they, uh, <clears throat> they were deployed in the same time. 
Um, so I've, I've put in some stats here just to give you a little bit of indication about the rate of change that we're experiencing, how fast that transformation is. It's not uh, really something that, you know, an end, end goal, it's, it's, it's something that's happening all the time. So this graph right here on the side is a three-year history. Uh, the two lines are really the number of users in OneOps, which is primarily development teams, developers. So we're up to, up to like 5,000 developers at Walmart. It's, it's a large technology organization. And majority of them at this point are onboarded and using the cloud through the combination of OneOps and OpenStack. There's about 3,000 what we call assemblies, which are essentially application or service unique designs that exist in OneOps. We'll cover that a little bit as we go through, the, uh, <clears throat> through this talk. Um, as I said, it's a full stack change. So what we're doing is we're changing a lot of the uh, platform technologies that, 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 the develop, that the applications run on. So we are heavily pushing open source technologies at this point. Um, and we have about 60 of those sort of standardized as choice for developers to be able to leverage those. Um, the speed of change, Walmart used to be, at least the dot-com portion of Walmart used to be a very monolithic, static, update the site once every two, three months, at, months, at one month at best. We're going to where we're doing on a monthly basis some 40,000 changes uh, to many different applications going on in a more self-service mode. The type of, as I said, there's a bit of a culture and process change. So um, we, you know, we have these buzzwords like you build it, you own it, and decentralized type of uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, life cycle management and so forth, right? So we provide some technology for that, but it's it's an organizational change, and those deployments are uh, you know are mu order, several orders of magnitude different than what we used to have, and to a large degree we're we're automating a lot of the what we call the full life cycle. So it's not just about getting a, a, a you know a change from one point A to point B. It's a, it's about running and managing and maintaining these applications and services with a large degree of automation that we we get through the platform. So um, one of the interesting uh, tidbits we talked about with, with Andrew this morning is that, um, for example, our, on an annual basis, we create and destroy cloud instances about four times as what our total number of instances is. So there, there's a lot of velocity where we are constantly changing the cloud or the resources that run in the cloud in order to serve the application and, 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 uh, uh, <clears throat> and the business, right? So. Um, <clears throat> What I want to talk about a little bit is how we do this stuff, like these stats. Um, you know, one of the things you notice is that this curve is sort of unpredictable. If you ask me what this curve is going to look like three years ago, I would have no clue, really. It, it, was, it was just a matter of really building a platform that's built for change, as opposed to building a platform with certain projections or how that's going to be. And we had to do it that way because it's just way too much velocity and change going on right now. So what we really needed is something that's going to scale um, and, you know, the growth comes from all places. Gro growth is organic where your existing apps are just used more in the cloud. Growth comes in for putting more apps in the cloud. But also growth and change come from sort of introducing new technologies in the cloud, you know, containers and what have you and, and, and new, you know, there's pretty much new databases coming out on, you know, every week, new programming languages coming out every week. So it's, it's really hard to keep up with this thing, but you have to. And the, and the key is to have a platform that will allow you to keep up, and that's kind of what we've tried to accomplish with the, uh, you know, with that OneOps technology, right? So, um, <clears throat> how we do it? Uh, generally, um, what we have is um, that trade-off between agility, velocity, speed, and on one side, and you have the governance, the availability on the other side. Um, it's a matter of sort of raising the bar of where that trade-off comes in, or being flexible of where the trade-off is. Um, because it's not always black and white. It's all, you know, different teams and different organizations and on a different curve of adoption. So it's a matter of sort of impedance matching what the organization is capable of versus what the platform is providing. And that's the, the type of stuff that we, we've tried to accomplish with OneOps because the, the core platform s simply just allows you um, to set those knobs, es essentially, where you want. And, and, and the content we develop and provide which is the sort of distributed development of Walmart, where a lot of the best practices, everything that comes in into the platform that provides um, value to the developers is, 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 is a constantly changing as well. It's not a fixed uh, 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 picture, if you will, right? So uh, for us, it, it, it was important for our business application developers to focus on writing the business application code 
not spending too much time or writing code that drives infrastructure or, or consuming the infrastructure services, right? Uh, but we wanted to do it in such a way we don't reduce the choice, right? So um, what we have is really the ability to capture a lot of the best practices that exist for various type of technologies, for various type of provider. And obviously, OpenStack is a huge chunk of how we deliver the infrastructure. Uh, but we, we, we wanted to be careful about you know, OpenStack itself is changing. Uh, but there, there, you know, we also have a hybrid strategy and, and, what, and, and other type of uh, supply that we need to account for. So at this point, uh, what we're trying to do is really just find that sweet spot at any point in time where we will capture those technologies uh, and the best practices and then offer them to the developers. So it's, I, I think I have a little uh, time to do a quick demo, but essentially what, um, let me see if I can. Uh, so some of the value we get out of it is we can also automate uh, parts of the ecosystem that we haven't brought into the cloud yet, right? And so like things like load balancers, firewalls, um, uh, certificate management. Correct. So OneUps is a what we call an application lifecycle. It's it's a it's a tool for the developers to manage their apps, right? But mm -hmm. underneath the cover, what it does, it, it it is essentially it's the key driver or bridge that consumes the cloud and consumes all of those compute network storage services, and it automates a lot of the low level uh, and packages the low level orchestration and automation that we need uh, for the developers. So the way that generally works, uh, what I have here. Um, is, is the user interface for OneOps. I mean, there's, there's APIs and CLIs and so forth. So everything I, I do here is, is, you know, there's many different ways to do it. And, and we do have quite a bit of usage on the API as well. Um, we have what we call a, uh, an assembly called demo, which I'm in the design phase. So what when we call life cycle, we generally mean these three phases, design, transition, and operations. So OneOps is not just a, 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 you know, a deployment tool or whatever. It really tries to cover uh, that, um, uh, the three phases here, so it's not about just the delivering the application, but it's also making sure it's working 24/7, right? So the way they do it, we, they, they usually start up with a, uh, with a. I'm just going to do a very basic, maybe a two-tier application design that's going to um, add. Maybe we can add uh, in this design one app platform. This is what I called about best practices. The, these what we call the pack sources and and the the encapsulation of. Uh, programmatically of the best practices of how to run a certain technology. In this case, let's pick something like maybe um, a Tomcat web application. Um, what's happening at this point is that uh, generally the way we automate the infrastructure, uh, most people use those CM, used to use CM tools and now they're going to containers where they, um, you know, they would essentially do a code-driven approach to this stuff. We have what we call a model-driven approach where the code is behind the model. So what, what we have here is when we add certain things like a Tomcat platform, we have a certain level of composition that allows the developers to get the best way to run Tomcat at Walmart, right? And obviously, you can have many of those standards. This is just content in the system, and every organization can set their own standards or, or figure out how wide the scope of the standardization and so forth, right? Generally, what a, what a developer or a designer would do in this case, add things like artifacts, their app, certificates, pretty much top to bottom, everything that this application needs in terms of uh, platform infrastructure and so forth, right? So um, what, what, I'm, what we're going to do here is just add one more platform. Let's say we're going to add like um, um, a database. And let's pick something like uh, maybe Postgres. So this is what generally um, they would do up front when they're still building the application. They would create these designs, and this would be the home. Obviously, you can add databases, use database users, and things like that, and kind of uh, tie this whole together. So you can design a distributed application that, uh, with multiple tiers or multiple services and components, sort of encapsulated in a single workspace where they can manage that lifecycle. Right now, the key here is that what we're doing is, is a very abstract notion of a design that is capable of extrapolating itself on many different uh, providers, uh, including OpenStack and, and, and many different environments and cloud, cloud environments. That happens in transition, right? So once you have a design, you go to transition and you start creating what we call the uh, assembly environments, which are essentially instances of, um, of this design, right? So we can pick and maybe like create a, a QA environment for this. 
let's call it QA1. There's many different operational aspects that get superimposed on top of that design. So changing availability modes to redundant, picking, let's pick a couple of uh, maybe staging clouds um, right here. Make one primary, one secondary. And essentially what we're doing is we're creating one umbrella design, a unique design that is it, that it delivers consistency across all of the environments that are spawned from that design. And then you, what we do from that point on, we create many different instances of those environments that are tying to the, and you can see here the clouds I picked, maybe we'll go. Right, so this is the one of the staging clouds I picked. You can notice that the, the, this is an OpenStack cloud that delivers compute, storage. There's many different services of this cloud. This is all data and configurable in the platform that allows you to define your target supply. And then the assemblies and the environments are really the, 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 the demand, which is essentially the application team de, uh, you know, delivering the necessary requirements for, um, uh, for their application to run. So I, I'm going to stop at this point. I think the only thing I wanted to mention is the operational aspect. Once we deploy this environment, um, uh, we can update that environment. And it, you know, it starts into an automatic cycle where it repairs itself, it replaces itself when it needs to, it scales, and so forth and so forth. Um, what I wanted to do is just wrap up uh, with one more slide here. Is, you know, just to summarize, um, we've deployed OpenStack and OneUps together. Um, they work really well at Walmart for the last three years. Um, and uh, to a point where uh, uh, Walmart started seriously considering being a um, um, contributor in the open source area. So we've been doing contributions to the OpenStack projects. What we're trying to do this year is, is talk a little bit more, as I said, about the stuff around OpenStack. But since the OneUps technology works so well, what we're exploring is the path to um, uh, to move one ops into the OpenStack. Um, uh, yeah, so community. we want to have a conversation around it and, and get feedback from the community and see if this is something that there's interest around and if it makes sense to do for us. Um, uh, we've open sourced the one ops. There's a link at uh, github.com slash one ops. Um, and uh, like uh, Kiri said, we've had a lot of success. So we, we'd love your feedback. Uh, we'd love to share the story. Uh, Kiri and I and some of the rest of the team are going to be around for the rest of the week, uh, both here and at the Ops Mid-Cycle. We'd love to connect with you and, and discuss more. So and that's it.